Ian. Yeah. We're back. James and Julian, <laughs> Make It Mastermind podcast here at Make It Content Studios. And today we've got a very special guest. We've got Sana Khan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Just settling in here. Um, for anyone that doesn't know you or, you know, doesn't know of you, do you want to give us a bit of a, like yeah. a, a bio? <laughs> yeah, jump straight in. Um, who am I? Sana Khan. I'm 21. Um, I work full time I've got two jobs work full time at a bank in IT it's as boring as it sounds <laughs> and then um I've got like my part time side hustle passion kind of thing which is SK fitness so that's my kind of almost newly founded um female focused fitness business um and the aim of that is to kind of empower women to get into sports get active martial arts yoga general fitness mm. um just encouraging women in general um, specifically kind of South Asian women, but I do kind of open my client base up to all women. Um, so yeah, that's me. Nice. I just wanted to ask you a question and it's, it's going to seem a bit direct already, but um, why do you think that there's more of a separation of men's and women's fitness now than ever before? What was your reason for setting up like a female only fitness brand? Mm. From my like personal point of view, I've always struggled to find a female personal trainer that I can relate to. So like one of my clients had a call with her the other day and she was saying that the reason why I like training with you is because you don't walk around in a sports bra and high waisted leggings and, you know, like show off your ass and like look intimidating because for other women looking at that and they don't look like that, that is intimidating and it's almost like unachievable for them in a certain way um so i think at, from my opinion that is female fitness kind of personal trainers out there that um i could never relate to and the demeanor i think needs to be very different when you're targeting women especially because women can be very insecure you've got to be able to relate to them on lots of different levels um so i think and, and as well coming from a martial arts background i was saying to you guys earlier that like at, the, at our boxing gym at um, Oster's, there's no women. I'm the only girl there. So, like, when I first started going there, like, walking up the stairs, I'd be so anxious, like, to just walk in. Even after months of going, I still sometimes am now, um, just to walk up them stairs and just think, oh, like, are people going to look at me? Are people going to prejudge me because I'm a girl? Are going to think I'm shit because I'm a girl and I look, I know I'm small or whatever. So I think it's just, like, if, if I had somewhere that I could go where there were more women that were similar to me um, or even just women in general to kind of um, feel a bit more comfortable, relate to somebody a little bit more. Um, like there's certain things, there's certain times that women go through that you couldn't go tell a, a male boxing trainer, for example. So I've always wanted to be that kind of female that I never had, um, almost as a role model for other young girls or other women to look up to. Um, and coming from my kickboxing background, like a lot of the girls at the kickboxing gym have said that I kind of, encourage them to want to train and go for the senior belts because not a lot of women at the time were going for senior belts they'd kind of stop at red belt which is where you have to start sparring because they were intimidated to spar with the guys and there weren't many females who they could spar so that's where I kind of played a part in encouraging them giving that bit of confidence and working with them a little bit closely so I've always just wanted to be that woman that I never had to look up to. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's that's basically the the whole root of uh, why we started this podcast was like to educate our younger selves. We looked at when we were younger and said, what would we have needed, or you know, maybe we wouldn't have listened, but what would have been beneficial to us when we were growing up, trying to understand, you know, how to progress and make it, and understand, you know, how to you know improve yourself financially, physically, mentally, mm -hmm. uh, and that's yeah, that's where where this came from basically. So we can we can super relate to that. Yeah. And uh, have you had any, what's been the early feedback from from uh, people like, well, women that you've been working with? Amazing. Um, I get messages like daily now from like Instagram, people on my page, liking my content. Not even just the fitness content, like the other content. I think I, I want to be like an all-rounder. I don't just want to focus on just fitness, just martial arts, just um, yoga. <laughs> I want to be like someone that people can look at and think she's a real person. Like social media, there's so many real but fake people like you you put out there what you want to put out there 
if you have a shit day, you're not going to post yourself crying on your story, are no. you? You're going to post the next day when you feel a bit happier and you're smiling. Like, but I don't, I don't want to be that. Like, if I have a shit time or if I go off Instagram for a while, I want to tell people why. I want to tell people what I've learned. If I have a struggle with mental health, I want to share that with people so that other people who go on my page can relate. Um, like an example with social media, like I went off, I go off on and off Instagram occasionally because I think it's very easy to become obsessed with it, obsessed with the followers, obsessed with the likes and even just in terms of productivity because I've been getting more messages which are really positive and I'm, I'm happy for that. I don't want to be spending too much time on it. So I took like I think a week or two off and like a few people were messaging me, like my friends asking me, like, are you okay? You've gone off Instagram, you've not posted for a while. And I was thinking after, I was like, why have you asked me if I'm okay because I'm not on social media? Next time, ask me if I'm okay when I'm too active on social media. Because it's like, when you go in on Instagram, I feel like when you're scrolling and you're checking people's stories and you're posting a lot, I feel like people go on there as a distraction from whatever's going on in their lives. Mm. So rather than sitting and being alone, with your thoughts for five minutes waiting for the bus they're scrolling on instagram because they're almost trying to like run away from the thoughts so it's like ask me if i'm okay when i'm too active not when i'm inactive because when i'm inactive i'm being productive and i'm spending time that's useful i'm spending time in my business with my family so actually i'm the best i've ever been when i'm not active so i kind of like deep everything in a in a way but um that's yeah i think i've got a very love-hate relationship with social media yeah, you can kind of tell. I think that's, you know, that's a great point, though, that, um, you know, you should be concerned maybe if your friends are on there too much rather than not at all. It's mm. it's, uh, it's a strange one that we, you know, we've never had anyone really mention it to us in that way. We talk about social media on this podcast loads just mm. because of the way that, um, like you say, we've sat with a lot of people now and it's hard for someone to bullshit us for, it's hard to bullshit someone for like an hour an hour and a half mm-hmm. so you see who the fucking real people are like who are what what are they saying online and what are they saying mm-hmm. to you in person like is it the same thing and sometimes yeah. it's not and yeah sometimes it is and it's yeah it's an interesting concept that it's been made apparent to us mm. really but it's yeah you're right it's mm-hmm. something that people should definitely look at but you've got such a mature view of the world <clears throat> at such a young age and like, I just wonder where where you yeah, what do you what put that ask. what do you put that down to? Um, my maturity uh, kind of grew. It had to kind of had to become more mature when I started working at the bank. I was sixteen, left school, didn't do A levels, um, and I I was like I don't, I've, I'd say I don't, I've always been mature like from kickboxing <laughs> because going through the belts you have to learn to start instructing seniors guys people older people younger so like from a younger age from starting kickboxing at 14 in my head there was never any difference between somebody that was a 40 year old male to a 15 year old girl like to me everybody was equal Mm. because when you when it comes to a sport like that if you're a white belt you're a white belt if you're a black belt you're a black belt and that's the only hierarchy that there is there's no age no culture no gender nothing that comes into play it's you you either have the experience or you don't have the experience and if you do have it you're giving it to the people that don't have it and if you don't have it you're looking up to the people to seek it from those who have it and I feel like I see that in life as well like I don't I'm not scared to speak to senior people at the bank I'm not scared to speak to anyone really and I feel like that's helped me mature um and yeah and even I think my mum plays a big part in my life in general and um that kind of she's a very very good role model for me and she's always kind of pushed us to do things ourselves like you know like when you're younger and you go to the doctors and you just look at your mum or your dad and be like yeah you tell them what's wrong with me like she'd always encourage us to speak um from a young age and be like a little bit more confident and go and do things and and stuff like that so I think that's definitely helped nice nice so I wanted to ask though with um with your business then so Sorry, my mind's just gone completely blank. <laughs> You've gone blank? Yeah, my mind's just gone blank. Yeah, I'm just, Sorry, see, do, you know what, <laughs> do you know what it is? I find that um, like role models play a big part. And then the, the second to that is how how are you actually feeding your mind to mm. then develop? Because I had de- some decent role models in my life, but then I got to a point where they were all at a very similar level. So to do anything further than that, I kind of... 
had like a weird, not a weird moment, but I was like, fucking hell, like I need people around me that are better than me. Mm -hmm. Not better than me, but maybe they're doing certain parts in their life that I, you know, I'd aspire to do. So what, so what do you do to, to, to put them people around you? Or what do you do to mm. get that, you know, bring that knowledge into you basically? What have you put into your life or routine or whatever? Yeah, I fully agree with that. You should always have people in your circle that um, know more than you, that you aspire to be like, um, that are in a position where you would like to be in a year, in two years, in six months. Mm. Um, and I think without me even trying, I've always been surrounded by more mature people like my average age of friends is like probably like 30 it's weird mm. like even when i was younger like 18 19 I'd, i've got friends who are like 30 40 and good really good friends of mine and i don't know why i just naturally attract like older people for friends and i think it's because i can have that mature conversation and, and be on a level with people but also have that childish side and have a laugh as well like i've got that kind of mixture of two and like young people i've got very few people my own age because not, I'm not gonna lie, they just piss me off. Like some young people, their mentality and their mindset is just like, how are you gonna even like, like it's just almost feels like a waste of time. Like going out every weekend, just talking about if it's a guy, just talking about girls, or if it's a girl, just talking about guys. Like I just, it does not, I don't get anything from that conversation. And I feel like if I want someone in my life, they need to be benefiting me as much as I'm benefiting them. Um, not always. Like <coughs> some friends you can have a laugh with or whatever, but personally, I just don't see the point in. Um, not being around like-minded individuals because your company that you keep has an impact on your life. I don't care if people say it doesn't, it does. Yeah. It has a massive impact on your mindset, where your your drive is going. For example, if you're around someone that's very negative all the time, they're moaning about the weather all the time, then you're going to become negative and your mindset will change. So I've always tried to surround myself with people who who were like, better better than me I mean, i'm not afraid to say that they are better than me as well i think there's an element of ego you've got to know how you are where you are and if someone is better than you whatever your de definition of better is then you've got to kind of accept that yeah do you know what that's it there's so many actually so many aspects to what you said obviously you need to have that self-awareness to understand where you are mm. realistically mm. and then you also need to have that awareness of you know the people around you, you know, what are they, what are they teaching you? Are they, are they benefiting you? Um, and then, do you know what? Funnily enough, though, I read a book recently. Uh, it's called Black Box Thinking, right? Mm. And it's really about how it's, he's saying like, oh, be around people that always give you benefit. Don't be around negative people. And I definitely agree with you. Mm -hmm. But then I, it did change my perspective on how important it is to have maybe, people might see someone as negative if they're, if they're critical. Mm. but having that criticism is and can be very good like we've had it on this podcast in different aspects of say and we always say like quality of audio the first thing that people said to us what you're doing is great fully behind it mm. <laughs> your audio is shit mm. so we had to go about and address that but you know we could have easily and it could happen every day in you know different situations like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> messaging or saying this? Like we didn't ask yeah. for your opinion. Yeah. And people get too like, that's when your ego comes into play. Is your yeah. ego too, if our egos were too invested in this podcast and it was like a direct link between them, mm -hmm. his criticism of this podcast is like a, a direct insult to uh, us basically. Yeah. And I just think that it is, I think it's, I think there's a good point to make that, you know, try to take, criticism on board from people when uh when it comes your way obviously look at it objectively look at it in a way that yeah you i can think view it. um i think what you said there is two very different kinds of people mm, negativity are, yeah. and being able to give someone criticism mm. it, two very different things if someone's negative and they were saying to you um you both sounded shit and that's it yeah. they didn't say anything about the quality or the audio they just mm. said you sounded shit then that's negative. Um, but if someone was critical and they said, okay, your podcast was really good, the content is amazing, but your sound quality could be improved, that's crit criticism. Yeah. And like, for example, I was creating that poster that I showed you both before and um, I messaged a few friends last night and I was like, what do you think? And one of them was like, that's too basic. Like, you're not a basic bitch. Put your personality <laughs> into that poster, put some colour into it. And I was like, 
thank you. And, I, and he was like, I hope you're not offended. And I was like, not at all. I was like, I asked you for your opinion. So you give me your opinion. I'd be offended if you said, yeah, that's amazing. And there's nothing that can be improved. That's when I'd be offended. So there's definitely two kinds of people. And if you can't take criticism, then you've got ego problems and you you're a bit too up your own ass, I think. Yeah. And you'll you'll never you'll never truly improve your people are just blowing smoke up your ass. You'll, never. You you know when you know like you're in the fitness industry. You need feedback you, constantly. Well, and people will never grow and progress without doing something yeah. that was harder than they did yesterday, mm-hmm. right? Simple basic stuff. You're not going to grow yep. if you don't you know, you're not progressing in some way, you're not pushing yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Like you're only going to grow through that struggle. And a lot of people made that point to us on this podcast. Like, you know, like Neil for one from King Kobe definitely did. Like you have to go through hard, shitty times and it'll only be months and months and months down the line that you'll realize that it was maybe a positive thing. Yeah. We had, um, who was on last week? Stuart. And he was talking about how he wanted to be a boxer and, and he tore his biceps. And on that moment, it was like the worst thing in his in his life. But now it's given him like a bit of a purpose to go set up a men's uh, mindset, mental health magazine. Yeah. So, you know, like perspective is everything, time yeah. is everything. But it's, yeah, it's just super interesting, I think, to, to, to look at it in that way. I think it's reflection as well. Mm. Like if you That's guys one, yeah. reflect back on your podcast when you first did it to now, like look at the progress look at what you've been through to get to where you are like mm. you've gone through the hardship and i think with every hardship comes ease and sometimes it's difficult in in life generally to think that because you don't know how long the hardship will last but mm. there will always be ease at the end of it so that's what can kind of calm your mind a little bit um in terms of knowing that the ease will come but with the hardship like nothing's easy yeah. So with the hardship, then this is what I was going to ask you before before my mind went blank. <laughs> um, so with you running your PT business and working full time at the side, have you done uh, gone about managing your time for that? Because you yeah. know, young people super distracted. Mm-hmm. Obviously, your friends will probably want to do things. Mm-hmm. So how what how have you gone about doing that and disciplining yourself? I'm not going to lie, I don't have a lot of friends <laughs> <laughs> because well, I have people that I know, but like friends, 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 like mm-hmm. really close. Um, I've got literally like my mum, who's my best friend, my little sister, my other best friend, and I've got my other friend Katie, and that's all kind of that's my circle. Um, um, and obviously my family, like I'm very close to my family, so if I need to spend time with people, I'll take Hannah out, my sister, or I'll take my mum out, and that's my time away done. Um, which is kind of nice because it's not distracting. I can just like the home, I can just go out, and then that's it. Um, and in terms of work, like it's helped being in lockdown because I've been trying to push more online stuff with the fitness stuff. So if I'm like working nine to five and then in the evening I'll do my fitness stuff on the weekend, I'll do my fitness stuff. Um, so I never really stopped working, but because I enjoy the fitness stuff so much, it's not working for me. Like that does not, it doesn't feel like a job. Like I enjoy it so much. Um, there's obviously there's elements to it that I don't enjoy, like the admin or whatever, but you just got to get that done, don't you? Um, so yeah, I don't feel like I've struggled t- to find the balance at all. And I think before I started it, I knew that I would need to be able to balance the two. Um, like at the moment, I'm trying to progress within the bank and progress my business. I'm doing both alongside each other. Um, and I think with it being my own business, like it, it grows, ju- it grows just as much as I put the work in. So if I slack for a week, then it's not going to grow. Yeah. And if if I put if I work my ass off, then it'll grow mm. faster. So it's just like one of them. Um, like I motivate myself which is hard sometimes because when you work for someone else it's easier to just get shit done when there's a deadline but when you set in your own deadlines um, I think it's a little bit more difficult but you've got that's where you always come back to your why and um, like the impact that you're having on people mm. and the impact that you want to have and continue to have on more people that's what's kind of like my driving force yeah do you know what that makes that makes so much sense I mean we, we both work full-time jobs and we and we do this at the same time and we re- like you get out what you put in mm-hmm. you, you definitely do and it's uh yeah it's a, it's a funny one to manage both of them and like you say like there's, there's aspects that are a pain in the ass and that mm-hmm. you don't want to do but if you do enjoy if you do find something that you enjoy it does not feel like mm-hmm. like work people might look at us podcasting and be like fucking hell he's been like hours on the weekend doing podcasting I'm like yeah but it, it, love it, it doesn't see the time yeah it, it doesn't mm-hmm. feel like that at all yeah and everyone says to me like i think you need to take a few days off like don't don't do anything but like if i know it's important to have time off but it's also important to 
get shit done mm-hmm. and it's not gonna get done if you're having time off and I think um as long as you're able to switch off when you need to and use that time when you're switching off to kind of not think about anything and then go back to the work that you were doing with a fresh pair of eyes that can be beneficial but if it's like just take a whole week off so to me that's like not how billionaires make their money mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah, I'm the same. Do you know if I were to take a week off, I've got to replace it with something else. You know, if I'm definitely not gymming for a week, I've I've got to be doing running or doing mm-hmm. something else. Mm. Um, yeah, that's it. Trying to fill trying to fill that time. It's I just feel guilty, man. I don't know. Yeah. I, I guilt trip myself if I mm. if I don't do it. Weirdly. Yeah, it's weird. Do you ever do you ever feel like it can become like? Do you think that's unhealthy, in a way? I think it could become unhealthy. Yeah, but I don't know. I think it could become unhealthy, but um, depending on how you feel. But then I know going to the gym makes me feel good. So yeah. Like the, after I've done it, it feels good. Yeah, yeah no, I know. Exactly but the pre guilt is doesn't yeah. feel good. <laughs> like no, if no. you like if you feel physically and mentally drained, but you're still going, then that's the problem. But if you know that it's actually physically and mentally giving you a boost, mm. then I don't see the problem. Mm. No, that's exactly it. Like that. That's exactly it. Um, and that's what it goes back to your whole thing about like Instagram and like running away from like understanding yourself basically like finding stuff to hide away from it if mm. you do that you're not going to be able to know if am i burning out am i fit am i tired am i doing this mm-hmm. am i on autopilot am i doing it in the right way mm. you're not gonna have that time to reflect on stuff that's mm. what i've found recently that's what i've enjoyed about running like yeah. running gives you that like total headspace like the conversations you have when you run in your own head are, mm. like, are, are fucking crazy like you, you end up figuring loads of shit out mm-hmm. Like I want to run like every day before work now because it just I don't know like it so just does something to my mind to just properly flush it out. Mm. Meditation I, has that same effect. I don't do it much, but um, like my mum recently got diagnosed with like a kind of chronic illness, and she's been trying to find different coping mechanisms and speaking to lots of different people. And um, one of the things she started doing in the morning is just sitting outside on the grass. Um, and just breathing. So I showed her a few breathing techniques from yoga. Um, and she's just been like closing her eyes, calming the mind. And she's done it for like a few days and I've seen massive changes in her mindset. Um, it's, it's very easy to become negative when you you have something so new. It's very difficult to come to terms with it. So um, she's found like massive benefits in that. And I think meditation isn't just sitting down and, you know, what you typically would think of it to be. Like running can be a meditation for you. Mm. That's your form of meditation. That's where you're um you're acknowledging your thoughts you're letting them come in your mind you might you might actually give attention to them or energy to them but because you're running your energy is probably going into your run so you're letting the thoughts come in and you acknowledge them and then you just letting them go letting new thoughts come in letting them go and that's essentially what meditation is uh, acknowledging the thought but not putting energy into it um and just letting it go and just just being in the moment in the now like without thinking of anything yeah do you know 100 percent? like i had a random floor once when i was at the gym and i was in the steam room right and i and i and i kind of thought to myself i was like this is fucking ace like this is so good because my phone could be ringing right the worst shit ever could be happening in the world mm. and i have not got a fucking clue and for like 10 minutes i'm completely detached from fucking everything mm. and then at that moment it kind of twigged like there's real fucking benefit in being able to detach from a world that is now so connected like anyone can get older you basically at any time mm-hmm. now everyone's phone remember when you used to go to bed maybe you're a bit younger man i don't know but <laughs> and you turn your phone off yeah. you turn your phone off to go to bed and now no one turns their phone off you don't even turn your wi-fi yeah. off now exactly right. like everyone is just <laughs> super connected mm-hmm. and now more than ever like you know in the last few years i've, I've realized that you know, being able to detach yourself from from stuff like that, mm. is, I think it's totally freeing. Like you can see how how it does affect people that are always like constantly like bombarded with like thoughts and mm. you know reacting to stuff that's going on. And yeah, because then there's no time for reflection. Like we were saying, like if you're not alone, um, and this is another thing actually about being comfortable with your own thoughts and your own head. Mm. Like if you can't just sit and go and have half an hour before you fall asleep to yourself um I think that's a problem I think if you can't kind of acknowledge what's going on in your own head um and think about things then 
what are you hiding from? Like, what are you, you're trying to find a distraction, but like, what are you distracting yourself from? Like, just face it. Yeah, like you could be going through a shit time, but it's not going to get better if you try and push it back. Like, even the smallest thoughts, and um, whether they're negative, whether they're positive, like, put some thought into them sometimes to understand why you feel like that. Um, like, because that's when you can do something about it. I think if you're always trying to hide behind a device or hide behind alcohol or I don't know whatever people find negative coping mechanisms for um there's there's reasons why so I think it's like you've got to delve into that why and as well with the reflection like um it's very important to reflect daily I think Mm. but also important to reflect on a situation that where you're in now where you weren't previously but you always aspire to be where you are now so if you think back to before like we'll use a podcast you didn't have a podcast and now you have a podcast so it's important to reflect on that journey and because that reflection on the journey will then help you to plan for the future. Um, so like with SK Fitness, six months ago it didn't exist. Now it exists. Do I want it to continue to exist? Do I want it to stay where it is? Do I want to go backwards or do I want to go forwards? So that's where I think reflection, you think about the past, but you also think about the past because of the future. 100%. I think that's, that's I think it's super important for everyone. I used to, Remember when I watched like American TV shows, <laughs> pe- like kids would be keeping like diaries and shit. And I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, no one does that in England, what's going on? And then I listened to a book, uh, Stillness is Key, Ryan Holiday. Mm. Fucking sick book. Like I must've listened to that like five times in my car now. And it's literally the one thing that it says is like, you got like journal every day. Mm. And I was like, all right, do you know what? Fuck it, I'll try it. Yeah. And it's there's something nice about getting whatever you're thinking in your head, just onto a bit of paper and then mm-hmm. you're done with it. And it, it's, it's so nice mm. that you, you start, do you journal and stuff. Like yeah. That, do you know what? I'll journal the, the, the odd bit. I've got like a gratitude journal that I'll, I say I should write in it every morning. But I don't write in it every morning, but I try to write in it every so often, mm. but no, definitely to, to, to write things down. Like I've started to do it for my, like for Jimmy now. I just find, you know, writing, even the set that I've done, mm. how I felt after the workout, the mood before going mm-hmm. into the workout. And then I don't know, I feel like it's a motivation to keep going, man. You're keeping a log. And it, my mum's always like advised me to journal when I was younger. Never really got into it, but mm. something that I've picked up now. Yeah. Because re- it's this self reflection so big, like reflecting on your actions. If you're not noting it, if you don't have some sort of log, you forget. Like it's it's so easy to, to sell things to yourself as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I've found, like there have been a few bits that I've journaled actually. That I've kept and I've gone back and read it like a year or two years later, and you're like, oh my god, so I used weird, to isn't think it? like that. Mm. It's, it's crazy. It is mm. weird, and it it makes you think like back to that time, mm. and because we like as humans, we can't um, memorize everything. We can't remember every single moment. We probably don't remember half the things that happened last week and half the thoughts and feelings we were having last week. If you're writing it down, then it's it will take you back and kind of jog your memory back to that moment. Um, whereas previously, if you didn't do that, you just wouldn't be able to do it because you don't, your mind doesn't have the capacity to do that. Um, I don't journal every day. I did try to um use the B journal that you guys gave us from that event. Um, and I started and I was on it, and and then it's easy to fall off it. It's hard to build the habit. Um, but I think in terms of like gratitude, if you, you know, I'd feel like yeah, it's important to write it down, but it's also important to think it and feel it more so than writing it down um i think it's easy to just write something down i'm grateful for my house i'm grateful for my health i'm grateful for my hands that's it like you know it's easy to write things down and just think of it off the surface kind of level but when you think it and you in that reflection time or in the morning or in the night and you really appreciate it and you put energy and thought into that thing more than just writing it down and then it's done i feel like it's more beneficial for me personally like it, it works more for me um because I'm thinking about it, I'm appreciating it, not just writing it down. Yeah, I sure think that's a great point. Man. Yeah, I think a lot of people like that. It just it scares people. Or, but then that's it goes back to the whole friend thing. Like if if I didn't have a friend like Julian, I couldn't say to him like oh, I started journaling. If he was gonna say to me, "Fucking weirdo, like, yeah. journaling," <laughs> I'd be like really like, "Oh, he's my friend, but he's gonna set the piss out of me. Yeah. I wouldn't maybe do it." Mm. You need that. You need people around you that are supportive or at least yeah. just not judgmental. If he does think it's stupid, mm. probably wouldn't tell me. Kill your idea, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Or even if he thought it was stupid, like if he was honest enough and your friendship was strong enough for him to just say, that's stupid by doing that, 
and then for you to be comfortable to respond back and give him the reasons why you're doing it yeah. and then for him to think oh okay that's that's kind of cool i've changed my perspective now mm. like that's a big thing mm. yeah to be to have such a friendship where you're just completely honest with a person like for example me and my friend were gonna go for a walk the other day and she was like do you know what i can't be asked she's like i don't want to go i got bothered go on your own like I was like okay fine I was like do you know what thank you for just being honest like she could have easily said oh my mum wants me to do the dishes or <laughs> my boyfriend's on my case like she could have easily made an excuse and I'm sure she probably has in the past mm. but we've got to a point in our friendship where we're just like so honest with each other and it's so refreshing like it's nice mm. and I didn't I wasn't offended I was like thank you yeah it's probably rare these days that's something I said to myself a long time ago like I got into a bad habit of just like saying yes to everything Mm. Like even if I didn't really want to go out, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'd definitely do that. And then on the day, I'd fucking make up some shit excuse and yeah. not to go. And now, and now I'm just like, do you know what? If I'm gonna do something, I'll just say, yeah, I'll do it. And you know, nine times out of ten, I'll do it. Yeah, but you do because you want to do it. Like it's so easy to be a yes man. I I used to be that. I always be like, yeah, I'll do whatever. I'll go wherever. I'm not bothered. But then like you know, the busy you get and the more productive you get and the more you value your time, yeah. that's when you're like, nah, I don't want to do that. Or I'm gonna waste my time doing that. You know yep. what I mean? hundred percent hundred percent so sk fitness mm -hmm. tell us what what's the what's the goal what's the plan so at the moment i've just finished a 14 day challenge I had about 20 people sign up to that um what what what, what was the, what was the challenge so it was i branded it as weight loss and toning because i feel like um when i was going through my clients kind of goals most of them were weight loss and toning mm. um but you're not going to lose a lot of weight in 14 days you might lose a little bit but it was more to build the habits and i find like maintainable habit maintainable replacements for the negative habits that people might have around eating and fitness um more so in lockdown so it's difficult to exercise if you don't understand how to do bodyweight exercises for example and if you're used to just throwing weights around um if you're a parent so i had a lot of mums sign up and it's very difficult to prioritize your time and think about yourself when you've got kids oh. which is fair enough you've got kids you've got to put time and effort into them but you've also got to remember yourself um so it was a kind of challenge for the fitness side of things nutrition lots of recipes but then also the mindset and motivation so we had like self-care Sundays where you just don't do any exercise and you do something to love yourself and appreciate yourself and um you know you've acknowledged that you've done such a kind of intense kind of week of of the program and then you're gonna reward yourself for it in some sort of way um that doesn't require you to go and eat a load of chocolate or have a takeaway like in a nice way that you're gonna feel good about not you're gonna feel shit about like not a short term kind of um high it, it's mm. gonna be like a longer term you'll feel good about it get your hair done i don't know something have a do a facial anything you know um so that was a 14 day challenge and then um hopefully we can keep that group going get some one-to-one -one clients out of it and then the next step is um female boxing classes something i've always wanted to do the, the actual original aim of sk fitness was to eventually do something like that um in terms of kickboxing or boxing and it's just happened to be that boxing was the first one that i kind of um the opportunity kind of came to me um so it's it's kind of nice when that happens when your goals are already aligned and someone else is coming to you and because i'm putting the energy out there i feel like it came back to me and I used to think that all that, that was bullshit before, but I actually believe it because I've seen it happen a lot of times now. Yeah. Um, even things like this, like I, I wrote when I started SK Fitness six months ago, a few goals that I wanted to do. One of them was to be on a radio. Now I've got like a regular slot on BBC Radio Leeds every four weeks. And another one was to be on a podcast. Um, and you've I, done, you've done, you've, <laughs> she, she's done that three times now. Just uh, Yeah, FYI. I've done the podcast <laughs> three times and they keep losing my files. So yeah, let's just help this one uh, <laughs> Yes, but yeah, so I think, um, I don't know what the question was. I just go off on one day. Uh, what was the goal <laughs> of uh, SK? What's the what's the big goal for SK Fitness? Like? Yeah, so the, the next step, obviously, female boxing classes. And then the, the goal is just to keep expanding, man. Like, literally help as many women as possible. Like, my plan is to just be that person to help. Mm. Do you know what? And we, we mentioned this off last, last time we chat, but it seems like self-exploration is like a super big thing for you and... Mm. You went and did a, a yoga course mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. we've well, well, minimal training before that. Can you talk us through that and tell our listeners a little bit more about what you did there? 
Yeah, so I literally went to a yoga class once before I went to Thailand. Um, and in that class, it was like in a little community centre with my mum. <laughs> at the end of yoga, they make you lie down and like for like a few minutes and just re- do relaxation. I remember on the floor, there was like a fly, like a dead fly on the floor. I was like, how am I supposed to relax? And I was literally like right there. And all I could think was, there's definitely going to be spiders like somewhere <laughs> crawling around me. Like, how can I relax? I just couldn't do it. All the yoga was like difficult. The music was difficult. The moves just looked weird. Like flying around, around in the air. I was just like, well, what is going on? <laughs> um, and then for some reason, I ended up going out to Thailand to learn yoga to then teach other people when I'd never even taught myself, mm-hmm. um, which is just a weird thing to do. What made you want to go out there? It. What what? Um, it was my dad actually he was like you know you can make a lot of money doing yoga mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like okay I've never really been interested in it but um, whatever didn't think anything of it for a few months and then he said it again and I was like do you know what why not try something different so I'll just go not even for the money side of things because I don't really make money from doing yoga now I, I enjoy it so much myself that I want to learn more before I can really start to teach people it properly Um so I just, I thought, you know what, I'm not going to do a yoga course in Manchester or Leeds because that's just like a bit, you know, a bit shit. Uh, I just go abroad. So I just Googled like where you can go to yoga courses. There was one in India, one in Thailand. So I was like, fancy Thailand a bit better. Um, and then I just went for a whole month on my own. 20 years old, that's flew right. out to Thailand via Hong Kong. So I was like, this is, the Hong Kong airport is amazing, by the way. It's like a fl- whole shopping mall. Um, so I was like going into Gucci and like Prada and like <laughs> trying shit on, trying to be a baller. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not buying this really. I was like, I'll come back. My flight's in a few hours. <laughs> just like having a good time on my own. Um, got there, didn't know anyone. Had to share a room with a, with a lady that I didn't know because it was like a grand extra to have your own room, which I wasn't paying. Um, and then I was on the course of like loads of different women, which was weird for me as well because I'm not surrounded by women, that many women on a daily basis. With work, it's male dominated. With boxing, it's male dominated. Um, so again, that was a weird experience. I had a few, you could say I had some ups and downs there as well. It wasn't all like amazing. Um, but yeah, in terms of the yoga, I loved it. I loved it so much. My core has n- had never been stronger from when I came back. My upper body, I could do so many press-ups that I could never do before. I could literally do like 40 press-ups in one go straight after I came back. I can't do that now because I've not maintained that level of fitness, but um, cardio fitness, Physical fitness was amazing. And I always thought yogis were like um, really, you know, skinny and not strong and they don't lift. And <laughs> like, I just had this completely wrong mindset around it. And when I went, it was completely transformed. And even the whole meditation side of things, like the first day we did yoga, we got up at like 5 a.m., watched the sunrise in front of the beach. And we were, they were meditating for like a whole hour. And everyone was like, um, and I was like, what is everyone doing? Like, this is so weird. <laughs> and my mind was just wandering. And by the end of it, I was like, I could, I could just sit and not think about anything. And that like reflection again, like I was saying, I reflected on that moment. I was like, wow, I'm doing it. And before I was like, this is bullshit. And now I'm actually like completely, you know, mm. um, invested in it almost. So I, I definitely think it was very good for my mindset, my mental state and physically as well. Best thing I've ever done recommend it to anyone yeah just throw yourself in just do it that's, literally it, do you know i think that's the best way like yeah. most of the best things that i've done i've just thrown myself out there and mm. just gone and done it and then and another thing actually when you do something like that go with no expectations if you have expectations you're likely to feel maybe negative about it after because it didn't live up to your expectations mm. but because i didn't even really know what yoga we even was I couldn't have an expectation because I didn't know what the expectation expectation would be. I didn't really read reviews. I didn't really do any. I didn't speak to anyone about it. I didn't really tell anyone. Everyone was like, what, you're in Thailand? And I was like, yeah. Because like, I wanted to do that for me. I didn't want to publicise everywhere. I went off social media for a whole month. That was, again, the best thing I've ever done in my life. Um, like all the girls would be posting on Instagram after. And I'd just be like, I've got the pictures in my phone as memories and that's it. That's enough. If I want to post them after, I've come back. Fine. But, like, let me just enjoy this time for me. Um, I didn't want to brag about it. Like, I don't want people to see I'm in Thailand having a good time meditating next to the beach and you're, like, sitting in your shitty nine-to-five job. You know what I mean? That's not nice for me to do. Um, so I just thought, let me just have this time for myself. Um, and, again, no expectations, and I, I couldn't be disappointed if I didn't have expectations. Yeah, that's a great point. 
I, just something he said then uh, it's totally off topic but mm. why do you think people only post like the the, the best stuff on, on their Instagram like that like you said like oh it's not it would have been nice for me to post on there mm. if someone else is stuck in their 9 to 5 job and like I see like I can see both sides of what you said like one side is you know we've we've had this conversation before is you choose who you fucking follow mm. mm-hmm. if someone doesn't like what you post just fucking unfollow don't mm-hmm. get mad about it you know you, you actually choose exactly what you see on there yeah um and then the other the other part is like oh why would you not post something good on there it, mm. why would you be concerned about other people about what they're doing because you might inspire someone mm. and if you piss someone off then it's just collateral really it's, mm. it's like was never we we wouldn't put our face on this podcast the first like 10 yeah, episodes episode. imagine that right and then someone said to us like i didn't know <laughs> who, like? who was black and who was white <laughs> and, <laughs> right? until we spoke <laughs> like, who's james who's julian <laughs> yeah so yeah it's just what I mean. it's don't be afraid to put stuff out there mm. I don't think. yeah i think um for me personally like if i'm gonna post something i want sometimes i'll post just a nice picture fine but most of the time I'll post something that people are going to benefit from. Even if it is a nice picture to draw them in and then the caption's like something that they'll gain something from. Mm. Because of us, I don't see the point. Like if I see someone posting like, for example, Love Islanders, I used to follow so many. <laughs> and then I was like, why do I follow them? I look at them and they just look perfect, but they're not perfect because they're airbrushed and fucking face tuned or whatever. So I'm like, I'm just going to unfollow them all because they don't make me feel good about myself. I'm never going to look like them. And what are they doing really what are you, what are you actually trying to influence you're an influencer but what, who are you influencing are you influencing young girls to get lip fillers because that's not the kind of influence that i would want to be having um so i think for me like i always want my post to be beneficial in some sort of way whether that's in a mindset kind of way if it's me at the gym that could motivate someone to go to the gym if it's me boxing hitting pads it's motivating someone to potentially want to do that um if it's me on holiday, then it's, it's me on holiday. Maybe you might think, oh, I need to go on holiday now. Do you know what I mean? Or like you've gone to town to do yoga. Maybe oh, I might do some sort of yoga retreat. Do you know what I mean? I think um, I think as well when people do post like the good moments, it's like it can, it depends how their intentions are, but like it can look like, oh, look at me. Like I've I'm stood in front of a Lamborghini. Well, it's not yours, so don't count. Like I've got a Rolex like, and they'll just post it. And it's like, well, what? why are you posting that? Like think of your why. Why you? Like, I always think of why you're doing that. Like why are you posting that? Mm. What do you want people to think about you? Like, cause social media is a reflection of you. But giving that an image, right? But what you mm. want people to have a reflection of you as. So yeah. like, like I said, imagine if everyone posted the depressing shit. Like it would not be a nice place. It already isn't a nice place. We don't want that. But we also don't want um the opposite where it's just like fake. Yeah, hundred percent. Like a false 100%. perception of like reality. Yeah, you know I mean? exactly. That's why we leave all the shit that we fuck up on this podcast. Like, I swear quite a lot. I don't swear at work, but I swear quite a lot on mm. here. We, we've we had, you know, boxers come in and we've done a full podcast and the, all the equipment's died. We've had to start again. Yeah. And we just, we just, yeah, exactly. Like when Sarah was there, battery died twice. It was, we've had loads of stupid moments, but we just leave it in. Lose my files twice. <laughs> <laughs> we are, you, you might yeah. be the you might be the person that we fucked over the most. Yeah, right. the uh, first time there was no sound and then no the sound and then and then yeah, someone no, had an no, eye no. infection. Who had the eye infection? Uh, yeah, that was me. Yeah, that's leg- <laughs> that's legit. To be fair, and then I cancelled. I missed like, football training for that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's funny. It's funny. All right, but we'll, as well, like sorry with the with this swearing thing, like and just generally being real, like that in business, you need to be authentic and real and true because. Mm. If you're fake and if you're putting out that false reality, it catches up to you. It's like what you're saying about social media. You meet people and you see what they post and then you see them in real life and you're like, you're full of shit because you're not preaching. You're not practicing mm. what you're preaching. Yeah. Your demeanor and your um, personality doesn't reflect your social media Content. personality. So who are you? Like, what are you trying to be? Do you even know who you are yourself if that's that? And that's you, you're there now in person and then you're there and online like they need to be aligned i think um and like if you swear so what you swear like that's how you speak you're not going to try not to swear because you've been authentic and true to yourself so i think that's probably where your success is coming from because you are so real and people like to see real things because people can relate to real people yeah do you know what it is i don't consciously it's not even about 
success. I think that if I wasn't truly myself, I shouldn't expect someone to be comfortable to mm. open up and talk to us about people. I've said stuff that have like completely stunned us to silence. Mm. And these are people we've never met before. Mm. And I don't know. I think you, have, you know, you have to give that, you have to put people have to be at ease. You have to, like you say, you have to be yourself and, yeah, people just put like a a highlight reel out online. Yeah, social media is like the inverse of that. Isn't it? Yeah, it's it's like you, it's like an accurate representation of what you, your ego is, like what you yeah. think you are. Yeah, it's, it's it is strange, and I've done it. I I'm not. I can't lie and say that I haven't because like I remember. <laughs> Neil said something and he was like, you know, you see them fucking pricks that drive around and they've got music playing and it's just a steering wheel and it's never a fork. It's always a DM. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah. I have fucking done that. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm never doing that again. It's fucking embarrassing. So funny. Yeah. But you need someone to pull you up on it. Like you need 100%. people to pull you up on it. Like, what are you doing? Like, mm. What the fuck are you Because then when you doing? think about it, really, it's like, yeah, what, what, what the fuck? And what yeah. do people think? <laughs> yeah, it's mad. Yeah, it's mad. But yeah, it's, um, I don't know, how long have we been going? Like an hour? Over an hour? Already? Yeah, it's flighting. No. Yeah, it's like 22 minutes past yeah. one. Yeah. Just under an hour. But yeah, it's it's been class. It's been class. I think mm. it's, we definitely have to get a, get a part two in with you. Yeah, I feel like we didn't even discuss like anything. I know. It's <laughs> it went so fast. <laughs> it does go fast. It does go fast. Yeah. But um, if people want to find your socials, they want to... Yep. Well, hit you up for some suggestions. Where can they go mm. for that? Yeah, so um, anyone leads based, the boxing classes will be starting from the 9th of August every Sunday, 11 a.m. in Ultraflex Farsley, um, Pudsey Farsley, both. Um, and then my other female fitness classes, which are just general fitness, will be starting again on Saturdays as well. Um, they're in Pudsey as well. Um, Instagram is sana.fitness, sana spell S A N W A. My dad just can't spell my name. We were looking at, he were on the phone to someone the other day to like a mortgage and he was like, how do you spell your name? What's your date of birth? And I was like, you, you gave me the name. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, Instagram mainly. I'm not really that active on Facebook or anything else. Yeah. Boom. That was awesome. I enjoyed that. Nice. Thank you.